I might be pregnant. Oh. As a teenager, I loved Gilmore Girls, but this scene in particular always bugged me. Luke and I came home from the magazine party the other night where we were a little loopy and it got primordial. This is When, when used, used Correctly. correctly. Who's not on birth control? What should you ask your doctor? Does getting an IUD hurt? Are condoms really 98% effective? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Lorelai is worried that she might have gotten pregnant by accident, but isn't very specific as to how that happened. All roadblocks down. We can obviously assume she had unprotected sex with Luke, but what does that mean? Did they not use a condom? Did she forget to take a pill? Or is she also a sponge user who can no longer buy her favorite form of birth control? Off the market? The sponge? No, no, no way. Everybody loves the sponge. I'm Nikki DeMarco, the pop culture video editor at the Washington Post, and I much prefer Elaine's directness on birth control over Lorelai's vagueness. While it's mainly used as a comedic device in this Seinfeld episode, plots like this help destigmatize birth control. Elaine is a single woman who is dating, having sex, and isn't ashamed of it. She has her contraceptive of choice and lets everyone know it. I just couldn't decide if he was really sponge worthy. But it took a long time to get to the sponge worthy moment. Before the late 80s and early 90s, TV writers really avoided the issue of birth control or found bizarre ways around it. Let's start with I Love Lucy as an example. Lucille Ball was pregnant during the 1952 season and wrote it into the show's storyline. She couldn't even say the word pregnant on air. CBS said it was too vulgar, so any mention of sex would have been truly outrageous. Remember, we're dealing with a married couple that slept in separate twin beds. It took another 30 years for networks to start talking about something as scandalous as condoms. In this episode of Valerie, Jason Bateman's 17-year-old character is ready to have sex, but backs off when he realizes his partner isn't on the pill. And then she makes a truly radical suggestion. You could just go down to the drugstore and pick up some protection. You know, condoms. Birth control advocates were thrilled about the scene. Planned Parenthood said that Valerie and other shows like it were the meager beginning to finally being able to talk about birth control in prime time. And once we got to the 90s, it was hard to miss. And my diaphragm goes flying out. The diaphragm seemed to be the birth control of choice for 90s sitcom writers. Elaine Bennis is joined by Monica Geller on Friends. Before I forget, did I leave my diaphragm at your place? As well as Ruby on Felicity. I need to get a diaphragm. And the queen of single women, Carrie Bradshaw, wasn't shy about needing help with her diaphragm. This is embarrassing, but I, I got a new diaphragm and it's stuck. And this brings us back to where my journey began, Gilmore Girls, which started airing in the year 2000. The show did have its progressive moments, but overall the topic of birth control was totally sanitized. We never learned what Rory means when she says she's got it covered in season five. I think I have it covered, and that wasn't meant to be a euphemism. This ambiguity permeates through so many modern, forward-thinking shows. So many of them fail to use specifics when talking about contraception. I'm pregnant. Like on Glee, plot lines about teens having sex were almost as common as all those freaking show tunes. False alarm. Rachel is in college and having sex with someone she doesn't know that well. And after a pregnancy false alarm, Santana pushes her to reevaluate her choices. This is a wake up call. I'd like to assume that one of those choices is what kind of birth control Rachel is using, if she's even using it. But the show doesn't take that next step of talking about condoms or pills or an IUD or anything. Even recent shows that have been lauded for their bold portrayals of female sexuality struggle with this issue. On the first season of Girls, Hannah asks a now infamous question. But what about the stuff that gets up around the sides of condoms, okay? What about that stuff? This really set the tone for what kind of show Girls was going to be. The characters talk about every aspect of sex, so it's fair that viewers like me assumed that contraception would be included. But the show's second season was criticized for showing a lot of unsafe sex. Fans of Insecure had the same complaint when Issa started having more casual sex in season two. Oh cool, yeah, this seems great. So while we've certainly come a long way on how sexually liberated women are portrayed on TV, I would still love to know what these characters are using as birth control. The way I see it, TV shows have two options. They can take the Lorelai Gilmore approach and leave a teenager like me wondering what she meant by all roadblocks down after her night of unprotected sex. Well, the last time I had my roadblocks down was, I don't know. Or there's the Elaine Bennis method, calling her birth control of choice by name, letting female viewers know that they have choices too. 20 sponges should be plenty. <laughs> you say 20? Yeah. 25 sponges is just fine. 25. And by the way, the Today Sponge, it's still on the market.
I thought I knew all the ways a man could elevate his sexual needs above mine, and yet here was a new one. Asking that I take medication that alters my body chemistry when I wasn't sure how many days, weeks, or months he would be around. 